Not all rappers write their own tracks. And today, we're breaking down the biggest artists in the game who got exposed for having someone else write their hardest bars. Kanye West got a start in the game by producing for other rappers, but then decided to hop in the booth and drop his debut album. Kanye was never a crazy technical rapper, but he still had great flow and was able to tell a story through his music. Kanye even bragged about not using Ghost Riders on the track Barry Bonds and said, talked it, then he lived it, spit it, then he shit it. I don't need writers, I might bounce ideas, but only I could come up with some shit like this. But it turns out, Kanye was using Ghost Riders from the start. Jesus Walks was Ye's first real hit, and he didn't even really make it. Rhymefest wrote the track, and Ye just spit the bars. What's wild is that after the news broke that Kanye had other people writing for him, it didn't even affect his career. By that point, Ye was so big that most fans didn't even care who was writing the hits. They just listened to the tracks. Now he doesn't care at all about writing his own rhymes. He lists all kinds of writers in the credits for his albums, and he even admitted that a dude named Partisan Fontaine wrote everything on the track Violent Crimes except for two bars. Ye might not care if everyone knows about his ghostwriters, but Partisan told GQ he was pissed over the situation. Partisan is trying to get his own rap career popping, and he doesn't want everyone to think he's just a writer. Kanye isn't the only superstar Partisan has written for, though. Cardi B is one of the biggest rappers in the game right now. She got some buzz off of her mixtapes and from being on Love & Hip Hop for a couple of seasons, but the track Bodak Yellow is what really set everything off. She became the first female rapper in 18 years to hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100, and it also made her the first woman to ever have a certified diamond record in the rap game. Cardi was winning awards, breaking records, and making history, but it turns out she didn't even write her biggest song by herself. Partisan Fontaine helped write Bodak Yellow, and he also has credits on the tracks Be Careful, I Do, and I Like It off the same project. A lot of people drag Cardi online for getting help with her bars and using ghostwriters, but she clapped back and said that Fontaine is a co-writer, not a ghostwriter. She said that she writes a lot of her own lines, but she just gets help with hooks on a couple of tracks. Cardi got clowned a lot for using writers, but this next artist almost had his whole career destroyed because of it. Back in 2015, Meek Mill linked up with Drake for the track Rico. It should have been a win for both of them, but then Meek hopped on Twitter to air Drake out for using a ghostwriter. According to him, Drake didn't tweet about his album because Meek and his team found out that he didn't write his verse. Meek also said he would have taken the verse off the album if he had the info before it dropped. Drake clapped back on the track Charged Up and said, N snitching on us without no interrogation. I stay silent because we at war and I'm very patient. Done doing favors for people because it ain't like I need the money I make off a feature. I see you niggas having trouble going gold, turning into some so-and-sos that no one knows. Me called the track Baby Lotion Soft, but said he could tell Drake at least wrote that one. They kept sending shots back and forth for a while, but the situation didn't really blow up until Pusha T hopped into the beef. Drake and Pusha had issues for years, but in 2018, Pusha started sending shots. The ghostwriter everyone said Drake was using is a dude named Quentin Miller. But like with Cardi and Fontaine, Miller was technically a co-writer since his name was mentioned in the writing credits. In an interview with The Fader, Drake said that he just needs people to spark an idea sometimes so he can take it and run with it. He said music is a collaborative process and I know that it takes me to execute every single thing that I've done up until this point and I'm not ashamed. Drake tried to brush it off, but Pusha aired him out on the track Infrared and said, It was written like Nas, but it came from quitting. At the mercy of a game where the codes is missing. When the CEO's blinded by the glow is different. Believe in myself and the Coles and Kendricks. Let the sock puppets play in their roles and gimmicks. The track sparked a massive war between Drake and Pusha T that ended with Pusha dropping one of the most disrespectful diss tracks of all time, the story of Adi Don. He went for the throat and exposed Drake for hiding the child he had with the porn star, not taking care of his mom, and being ashamed of his own race. The story of Adi Don was so savage that Drake couldn't even respond. Most people said Drake won the beef with Meek, but then Pusha hopped in and went crazy. A lot of rappers' careers would have ended right there. But by that point, Drake was such a superstar that he still had a massive audience who didn't care about the beef. It's not just modern rappers who have gotten caught using writers though, and it turns out that even legends in the game have borrowed lines from other people. Dr. Dre is one of the most influential dudes in the history of rap. He launched the careers of Snoop Dogg, Eminem, and way more, and his production style took over the entire West Coast back in the day. And even though Dre is technically a rapper too, he's always been using other people's bars. Ever since N.W.A.'s first record dropped, Dre's been spitting rhymes he didn't write himself. Ice Cube wrote most of his lyrics back then, and later he had Jay-Z, Eminem, and even Kendrick Lamar come up with his verses. He's not the only West Coast legend to use writers though. In 2008, Snoop Dogg told XXL that he started using writers after he saw Diana Ross get inducted into a Hall of Fame even though she never wrote her own songs. Still, Dre is one of Dr. Dre's most iconic tracks, 
and Snoop Dogg told The Breakfast Club, We all in the studio. 30 minutes later, that shit is done. He wrote Dre shit and my shit. And it was flawless. And me and DOC was like, well, looks like this nigga outstruck us on this one. So we're going to take the back seat and I'm going to accept it. And it was still Dre and it was Jay-Z and he wrote the whole fucking song. It wasn't just the West Coast legends using writers, though. And it turns out that one of the most unique rappers of all time was taking bars from his own cousins. Old Dirty Bastard from the Wu-Tang Clan had a style like nobody else. He helps set the Wu apart from everyone else in the scene with his wild bars. But in 2011, Method Man shocked everyone when he broke the news that Dirty was using rhymes from other members of the crew. Meth said that Dirty's cousins, RZA and Jizza, wrote a lot of the verses on his debut album. He said, Dirty took all their shit and made it his own, and Jizza didn't say shit. One night, ODB and Jizza were beefing over something, and Jizza told him, most of that shit on your album is mine's anyway. Dirty used some of Meth's leftover bars too, and in 2019, Jizza confirmed the whole thing. The truth about ODB shocked a lot of fans, but this next rapper didn't even start writing his own lines until his homie who wrote for him was shot and killed. Lil C started out as the hype man for Notorious B.I.G., but then Biggie made him a member of his junior mafia crew and Cease hopped in the booth. Cease had a lot of great verses back then, and in 2021, he admitted how that happened. In an interview with Vlad TV, C said Biggie used to write all of his raps. He said, I just wasn't a rapper. It was just an idea he had just for me performing with him that whole year before we got our record deal. It wasn't until Biggie was shot and killed that Cease picked up his own pen and started writing. Biggie also allegedly wrote a lot of verses for his homie Diddy. Diddy is one of the most important artists from the East Coast, but that doesn't mean he can write his own raps. On the track Bad Boy for Life, he said, How we twist shit, what changed but the name? We still here, you rocking with the best. Don't worry if I write rhymes, I write checks. Some artists might not care about using writers, but rappers like Kendrick Lamar say you can't be the best rapper if you're not spitting your own bars. Eminem is another dude who cares a lot about rapping, and he actually tested Kendrick in the studio when they linked up in 2013. M brought Kendrick in to feature on his track Love Game. When Kendrick rode up to the studio with a bunch of homies, M kicked everyone out and made Kendrick write his verse right there to prove he didn't use writers. Kendrick proved himself in the booth, and since then, there's been no question that he's one of the best in the game right now. Writing your own bars isn't as big of a deal as it used to be, though. Most fans just want to hear a good track and don't care who actually wrote the lyrics. There are still rappers out there trying to prove they're the best in the world, but at the end of the day, writing the best lyrics doesn't make you rich. Dropping hit records does.